If you're in the market for a new laptop specifically for programming, then the new M1 MacBook Pro range could be a great option. When you're looking to buy a new laptop for programming, you need to choose a device that offers plenty of power and enables you to create, compile, and test out your code quickly and easily. Something that I've learned over the years of working in engineering teams is that the true value of software is when it's live in production and users are interacting with it. So we really need Need laptops that speed up our programming workflow and do not slow us down. This year, Apple released their new M1 Pro and the M1 Pro Max processors with the new 14-inch and a 16-inch MacBook Pros. I'm a cloud engineer and use lots of different tools like Terraform, AWS, Python, containers, and a lot more, but I also work as a front-end engineer, so I'll be able to give a good mix of inputs for programmers in general. So in this video, we'll break down and review the specs, the screen, the performance of this M1 MacBook Pro 16 inch, and we'll also run some Terraform scripts and spin up some AWS infrastructure and see how fast it actually does that. For programming, you want a laptop with plenty of RAM to help with your multitasking. While coding itself is in an integrated development environment like an IDE application, that doesn't really require that much computing power, but the more powerful that your laptop is, the better it will be at compiling complex projects. If you work for a big global organization, then the chances are that you are compiling fairly complex and integrated projects together. With these new M1 MacBook Pros, you can actually upgrade your RAM to 64 gigabytes of super fast unified memory on these MacBook Pros, which means you can multitask at ease and everything that you do is fast and fluid. So you can compile your code whilst Googling what on earth the metaverse is and how NFTs work. This MacBook Pro is actually the entry model with 16 gigabytes of unified memory, which for software development is more than enough because Apple fully tuned their unified memory along with their GPU and CPU so you get the best possible performance. If you have some extra cash laying around, then you could upgrade to 32 gigabytes of RAM, but that's not really required. For processing power, you can max out the specs on this Pro with 10 core CPU, 32 core GPU, and 16 core of Apple's neural engine. It also comes with 512 gigabytes of SSD as standard, but you can upgrade that also to eight terabytes. Not only does this M1 MacBook Pro 16 inch compile your code very quickly, it's powerful enough to run your code in test environments, including emulated devices that allow you to see how your game or program works on a range of products. If you are a programmer who specializes in iOS or Mac apps, then this 16 inch MacBook Pro is super impressive with using Xcode. As Apple have optimized the development of their own native programs and their hardware so you get the best possible performance, similar to what you get with Final Cut Pro and Max. So a couple of weeks ago, I came across this tweet and we'll pop it up on the screen right now. And it basically says, we recently found out that the new 2021 M1 MacBooks cut our Android build times in half. So for a team of nine, $32,000 of laptops will actually save 100K in productivity over 2022. The break even point happens at three months. So that's basically engineering hours are much more expensive than laptops. This completely blew my mind and there's a lot of people that say that MacBooks aren't great for backend or Android development. However, as you can see from an engineer who works at Reddit and Reddit is a platform where he gets millions and millions of requests every single day. They're saying that their build times have halved since buying the M1 MacBook Pros. It really puts it into perspective that MacBooks aren't just for front-end engineers or designers. And I know a lot of people on YouTube like to think that, but you know, MacBooks nowadays are built really well. And there's a lot of applications, engineering for development are very much compatible with the new MacBooks. With that said, obviously, when the M1 MacBook came out, there's a lot of applications that weren't compatible with the M1 chip. But now when you download any software, any engineering programming software, you can choose whether or not you want to download the software for the Intel-based chips or the M1 MacBook chips.
Engineering time is a lot more costly for businesses than highly priced laptops. And it comes back to what I said before, that software is only valuable when it's live in production. And there's a lot of organizations out there that talk a lot about the speed of development for their software engineers, but they forget that their engineers are not using the latest hardware that will allow them to build, test, and validate their software much faster faster. Most companies focus on changing the organization's processes, approvals, culture, and although that does speed up software delivery, they also need to think about the kit, hardware, and the tools that engineers use to allow them to develop much more efficiently. Most programmers are likely to have a monitor plugged into their laptops, but with remote working and being able to work from anywhere, you might want to work from a cafe or co-working space. And if so, then having a large high resolution screen that is comfortable to work with for long periods of time is important. And the better the resolution, the more crisp and clear your code will be on your laptop screen. The M1 Max Pros come with liquid retina XDR display, similar to what Apple have in their $5,000 Pro XDR display, which is insane. You get such a high quality screen on a machine that you can just fit into your backpack. The ProMotion adaptive refresh rate means that scrolling through your code is super smooth and responsive. And the more screen real estate means that there's more space for your code, terminal, dev tools, emulators, and everything else that you use as a software engineer on the same screen. Now we have free USB-C ports and HDMI ports, and this is great as you no longer need to carry around a stupid dongle to connect your laptop to an external monitor. There is a slight screen wobble on the new MacBook Pro range, and it's a lot more apparent on the 16 inch rather than the 14 inch. For the battery life, normally you would get around four to five hours of programming usage, but with the new 16 inch MacBook Pro, you can expect a full days of work without charging, which is fantastic. The majority of my development time is on VS Code, which is a lightweight IDE and great for any laptop and using VS Code on the 16 inch screen allows you to see the majority of your code on your display. For any browsing or debugging your code, definitely avoid using Safari because it's not very developer friendly. Google Chrome also has a much better element inspector for the JavaScript DOM. And if you use React, then install the React Chrome extensions, which allows you to investigate any React component with ease. So as I'm a cloud engineer, I use a lot of infrastructure as code, predominantly Terraform. So what we're going to do, we're going to run a Terraform script and we're going to see how long that takes to execute and spin up some AWS infrastructure for us. So let's just go onto our configuration file. Very simple, all we're going to do is spin up a VPC and two subnets, and we can do that by, so if we run the Terraform plan command, it shows us what's going to be created, so let's run that. And that just took, what, one or two seconds, and you can see it's going to create a subnet, a second subnet, and a VPC. So now let's clear that again and press Terraform apply. and see how long it takes to execute. So here we can see it's already found what we're going to apply. Press value, yes. And now it's going to apply it for us. You can see it's creating a subnet, creation complete. And just like that, just so quickly, right? That was less than three seconds. It executed a script and it spun up our infrastructure in AWS, which is incredible. Now what we can also do is destroy it by pressing Terraform destroy. Uh, we'll tear it all down completely. As you can see, it says a VPC will be destroyed. As you can see, it will say the subnet's been destroyed and the VPC. So let's press yes. And just like that, our infrastructure has been destroyed. This Terraform script is obviously really lightweight, but it just puts it into perspective how fast it actually executes any sort of scripts or commands. Generally speaking, if you're a web, backend, mobile, or cloud engineer, then the new MacBook Pros are a great option to purchase for programming. The performance, the battery life, and the screen real estate is a great combo, but obviously it comes at a fairly high price. At $2,500, it is quite expensive, but the productivity that you get from this will be really high. And the return on investment that you get from your time spent not just waiting around for things to compile, you can spend a lot more time programming, 
testing, validating, rather than waiting for your program to compile and build. So if you are in the market for a new programming laptop, then the M1 MacBooks are definitely a great option for you. If you have another machine, you know, that does also perform really well, then just stick to what you have because not many people actually really like these MacBook Pros. I did make a video last year about why every software engineer has a MacBook Pro. And you know, there's a lot of people commenting, a lot of Windows fanboys that weren't really liking what I was saying. But there will be a part two of that video coming out soon and that will hopefully bring things more neutral. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at IamSolomon and I'll see you guys very soon for yet another video. Peace.